Our gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, beginning with the 31st verse. Jesus says, When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He'll sit on the throne of His glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate people one from another as sheep a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he'll put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. And then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You have, who are accursed, depart from me into eternal fire, depart, departed for the devil and his angels." For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The gospel of the Lord. Well, dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to focus on Jesus' words to us this morning, His message from Matthew 25, and it's a direct message from Jesus today. Are you familiar with the red letters in the New Testament? Wherever you run across red letters, who's speaking? Jesus Himself is speaking. Some people call themselves red-letter Christians meaning that when you run across red letters, pay attention. Because none other than God Himself is speaking. And this morning, if you take a look at chapter 25 in your, in your Bibles, I don't know if you're going to have those highlighted ones, but uh, 25 is all red. And so this morning, Jesus has a very clear and very simple message. And it's this, the way of God's kingdom is the way of service. In fact, the way salvation comes to us is through God serving us. On the cross, our God, our Lord, served us with His life, and salvation came. It cost him all he had, and he gave all he had to us, his very life, and won for us the promise, salvation that will be with God now and forever. That's what happens when we serve one another as the Lord serves. Heaven comes down to earth when somebody loves you, God is there. Health happens, wholeness happens when love happens. And that's salvation. God's kingdom comes amongst us. Well, 
This morning, the message is simple. The way of God's kingdom is the way of service. And I want to talk more about that message of Jesus. But I want to put our text into context a little bit. When Jesus said these words, and where he was when he said them, if you take a look at chapter 26, the, wor- the words right after our gospel text This morning, Matthew says, when Jesus had finished saying all these things that we just heard, Jesus said to his disciples, you know that after two days the Passover is coming and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Well, the context this morning is that we're hearing some of Jesus' last words. Often people refer to Matthew 25 as Jesus' last will and testament. We're told here two days to the Passover. That's two days before he's betrayed by Judas. That means it's three days until the cross. Jesus has three days of earthly life left. It's almost over for him. And and our last words or our last will and testament words important? How important are they? Just a little bit? Most of the time, people's last words or their last will and testament sum up what they've wanted to say all their life, what's absolutely important to them. I was thinking about Jesus' last words from Matthew 25 uh, this week, and my mind went to some last words from my mom, who passed away a couple of years ago. Her last will and testament. One day I received a, a letter in the mail from her lawyer. There wasn't too many pieces of paper in there. She lived a simple life. Yet, in that, uh, in that letter attached to her last will and testament, she had stapled a little security envelope that was sealed in the back, and I opened it up, and there was a handwritten note from my mom. Do you think these were important words? These last words? These last will and testament words to me? How important are Jesus' last words? Just a thought. She she went on, and I'll talk talk a little bit about her, but she said, I won't read the whole thing, just the, the back of the letter. She said, when we serve one another, we're making known among the nations the Lord's name. The way of God's kingdom is the way of What? Service. She said, actions can lift up Christ just as words can. Of course, she knew I was a preacher, right, Mr. Wordy? She said, always give thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And God, even our Father, she was quoting Ephesians 5.20. And then she said, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And remember, God is in everything we do. The way of God's kingdom is the way of service. It's what we do. Jesus said, if somebody is thirsty, what do you do for them? You go get them something to drink. And by giving them drink, really you you can save their life. If somebody is hungry, what do we do? We serve them food to eat. If somebody is naked, what do we do? We give them something to wear. 
When somebody is sick or in prison, what are we to do? How are we to serve? We're to visit them and share with them the gift of love. And when we do any of these things, God's kingdom comes on earth amongst us. Salvation comes. We learn it from the cross. What did Christ do for us on the cross? He gave us His life. He served us with all that He had to offer. And by so doing, salvation came to the world. Simple message, the way of God's kingdom is the way of service. The kids know. Give a hand up to somebody on the playground. Well, they're loving them. Jesus says in Matthew 25, 40, what you have done to the least of these, you have done to me. He's calling us today to serve him as he has served us with love, mercy, and hope. I wanted to say something about my mom, and I don't, you know, it's not nice to brag about somebody, but she's, she's not here, so she can't, well, she's in heaven. Hope, hope you're feeling good about this story, mom. <laughs> uh, when I was in junior high, uh, well, uh, we had a tragedy in our family. My dad was injured in a tractor accident, laid unconscious for two years before dying. My mom was so impressed with the care that she received, that he received in the hospital from the nurses. She wanted to serve others who were sick and dying. She had never been to high school. You know, she lived in the outback of North Dakota where I grew up. And so she had to go to high school. She went to Bismarck, North Dakota. That's the other Dakota's capital. And got her degree. And then she went to nursing school. And she became a nurse. And for the rest of her life, she served others who were sick and dying in the hospital, in ER, and medical floor, surgical floor. She was a school a nurse for the deaf school of North Dakota. She was in REM homes. She was in nursing homes. She would bring pickles to work, to share with the residents. She'd heard the call of Jesus. The way of God's kingdom is the way of service, and service is how salvation comes to us and our world. Remember Mother Teresa? She was a servant, wasn't she? She knew Jesus' teaching here in Calcutta, India. It's told that somebody would walk by her and see a leper laying in her lap. And as one came by, this person said, You know, Mother Teresa, I wouldn't do that for a million dollars. And Mother Teresa looked back up and said, I wouldn't either. She didn't do it for money. She didn't do it because it was risk-free. She did it because it was the way of God's kingdom and how salvation comes to us on a daily basis through service. As we go about our life this week, think about Jesus on this Lenten road. Serve those that you're going to run into with Jesus' love and hope and joy and peace. And while you're doing that, God's kingdom is going to come and bring health and wholeness to everybody you're with. Well, simple message this morning. Jesus says, it's red-lettered, the way of God's kingdom is the way of service. In Jesus' name, amen.